Is the beauty there objectively in the object? Look closely. Or is beauty again something labelled by our conceptual mind, based on our experience? And now focus on an unattractive object that is in front of you somewhere. Does this seem to exist there from its own side, objectively? Does the unattractiveness seem to be there in the object, objectively? Is that how it really <coughs> exists? Look closely. Is that object something created and labelled by the conceptual mind on the basis of a collection of many things, many parts? And is the unattractiveness also something merely labelled based on our experience? Now bring your attention to your body. How does that appear to you to exist? Does it seem to exist there objectively from its own side? Is that how it really exists? Look closely.
is body simply something labeled on the basis of a collection of many things, many parts? closely. Questions or comments? So, I guess I'm having a problem with something similar to what the fellow said that things do have a function, right? Like potential, like objectively. Like will objectively. Kill you. No, I mean, poison will kill you if you eat it, right? Like right. Things have effects. Correct. And does that. Does, it, does that mean they're therefore they exist objectively? That's the big question. And for us, yes, it does mean that. Because for us, there's two choices. If things function, they must be objective. Because if they don't function, they're just hallucination. So yes, it seems to imply that. That because things function, they must be objective. But that's the big question. Is that really the case? That's what we're trying to determine here. So, now I'm just asking to get a better feel of that. What, sure. What should I look for in my body? Because I look at my body and I say, okay, it's my, I feel it has something unique with me that right. makes me have a sensation. In Correct. It. So, we're, we're not saying there's no body. Yeah, no. But, Wherever you point, if I say point to your body, wherever you point, you're pointing to something which is not a body, aren't you? If you point here, that's a head, that's not a body, that's not a body, that's not a body, that's not a body. Everywhere you point, you're pointing to something which is not a body. So I should have that question in mind, right? That when I look at the object, I say, where is the object? Well, is it made of this far as well? Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you just look superficially, it seems like there's a cup there, objectively. But then we look closely at, is this bit here? I mean, if we really appreciate it, we can see that what makes this a cup is us. Because, you know, like, Someone from a foreign culture, they would they wouldn't see cup. I mean, if they've never had that sort of use. I mean, a, a, an animal wouldn't see a cup. 
So, if we look closely, we can appreciate that we are doing that, but it doesn't seem like that. That's the big problem. That's the big problem. It doesn't seem like we're in any way creating our world of experience. It seems like it's there. And that's the big problem. So, what should I, I mean, I always have this problem, maybe it's just because my shamanic is not strong enough, but when you say look closer, yeah. what, I mean, I can ask myself a question. Like, <laughs> well, like, like for example, like one good thing to do um, is we're looking at these flowers. And let's say, for example, you look and you, they, they look beautiful to you, for example. Let's say. Sure, yeah. It seems like the beauty's there, doesn't it? But where is the beauty there objectively? Is it this little pink bit? Is it this little round bit? This green bit? What objectively there is beautiful? And of course, if it's objectively beautiful there, it would mean everyone who looked there would have to see it as beautiful because the beauty is there. I mean, assuming your eyes are functioning correctly. But we can understand, well, not everyone who looks there, I mean, some people might look there and think it's completely ugly. So, yeah, sure. And so, so using also that line of investigation, we can really see that what's really happening is based on my experience and my, my uh, preferences and so forth, I'm interpreting that particular configuration of colour and shape as beautiful. So there's some sort of reason for the way thing. Yeah, so I mean when you're investigating we need to be methodical. We need to be methodical. We need to have some sort of otherwise we're just sort of looking and I mean of course it appears to be there. So we need some way of of challenging those appearances. And it needs to be very methodical. Otherwise it won't work. And there are many ways we can do that. And we'll look at some more ways, um, particularly tomorrow when we look for the, the meaning of the person. Um, so, again, but it needs to be experiential. Because intellectually, um, maybe many of us already in this room accept beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But is that how we relate to things, experiential? No. I mean, if we're having a pleasant experience, the beauty is there. Of course, look, it's there. Of course, that's why we argue with other people. You, you. <laughs> Can't you see right? Look, it's beautiful. Are you crazy or something? And so because we think it's objectively there, and if someone sees it another way, we argue and say, I'm right, you're wrong. No, that's why we argue. And so, in fact, that's why, and then we'll have a tea break, you may ask, what's the problem with seeing the world in this way, as made up of many separate, discrete, objective things. That's the problem. That's the problem. Because when we see it and we have a pleasant experience, the beauty's there. So it seems like that is the cause, cause of my happiness, my I want it, attachment. Unpleasant, the ugliness is there, get it out of here. That's causing my, my suffering, get it out of here, aversion. So that's why. Seeing the world in this way is the root of all of our mental afflictions and suffering. But that process we'll look at in more detail um, in the next session. Okay. So let's break there for afternoon tea, half an hour. So again, 4.15, the sippy, the yoga. And then 5.30, we'll come back, continue this discussion and uh, investigation into how things exist.